42 lapper, 100 kilometres. Lads, let's have a look at where we are. Fifth event of the championship, Perth, Western Australia. Originally known as Wanneroo traditionally, but it's now Barbagato Raceway. Uh, seven corners on paper, but you'll notice, Mark, that many of these corners you're still turning while you're trying to drive off the corner. No doubt, and it's a very low grip, Noons, which is why Mark Larkin made reference before about the tyre degradation. The car slides the whole time, from the time you put your foot on the brake to the time you finish the corner. These sectors aren't that important now, but what's really important is making the tyres live. And as you, you can see there, full throttle for only a bit over 40% of the lap. Top speed, 255 kilometres an hour. Very interesting racetrack. Soft tyre weekend, and Mark Winterbottom, he's the man who leads the points. 107 clear of Craig Lowndes with 300 on the line for the weekend. Fabian Coulthard has been in the mix. James Courtney, a bit of a quiet achiever this year. He's been on the podium at every event so far this year. He's the only guy to do it. He's staying in the game. Everyone's, oh, they've jumped to Moster. They've, they've believed yeah. Chaz on the view of vote. They're with him. The Ford yeah. fans. He's, uh, he's close to the front. I mean, his performance so far, he's been coming on so strong. The focus is on on uh, his teammate Mark Winterbottom, but Mostert is, is learning quickly. He has got a great team behind him, and, and uh, he's obviously taking note of everything they're telling him. So let's have a look at the Fuso starting grid for race 14 of our championship. Scott McLaughlin, a great job. Four pole positions so far this year, alongside Craig Lowndes, who's had 14 wins at this racetrack. Russell Engel, great to see him at the pointy end. Lee Holdsworth, first of the Erebus E63 Mercedes-Benz cars and Mostert. Great job to out-qualify Winterbottom. Also, Will Davison, for both those cars to be up there, great job by Erebus. Dave Reynolds and Dale Wood, 9 and 10. And Dale Wood getting back into the 10 after that great run at Winton. He won a Dunlop Series race here last year. Garth Tander from 12th, the hometown hero. Jason Bright alongside Tim Slade. Remember, they got together in New yes. Zealand at Pukekohe. Nick Perkat has been moving up the order in the last few events. He's alongside his Walkinshaw stablemate, James Courtney. Best Nissan, Rick Kelly, 17th mark. The Eltimers are struggling. Yeah, they wouldn't be happy with that at all, Noons. In fact, I thought they would go well here. Same with Van Gisbergen. For whatever reason, he just doesn't go well enough here. It's a, it's a style of circuit which I think should suit him but the results don't show it. And the three down the back, Scott Pye, James Moffat and Jack Perkins, it's their worst qualifying performance of the year, but for Moffat and Perkins, their 50th round start this weekend. 25 cars ready to go for this 42-lap, 100-kilometre race. Super sprint, but does it have a super pit stop? We'll find out. Well, that's the conjecture. There's a lot of people saying they're going to come in, even if there's not a safety car. Now, we've got 10 in-car cameras covering the field for you today. Jamie Wink up there before, Dave Reynolds on board now. Rick Kelly, as you said, we're disappointed with their outright speed, but their tyre speed may be better, Larker. Yeah, what's going to be really interesting here, mate, you've done it enough yourself, Scafie, is to start here. OK, pole position. Sure, it's on the inside, but we know the inside of the track is the dirty part of the track. The racing line on the outside is cleaner. We know these guys are both good starters, but if you can get on the outside and come round here through turn one, hang on the outside, you can just tuck in and get ahead at turn two. So now this comes into driver psychology. Scotty McLaughlin knows that Craig Lowndes is a tough competitor and will muscle him out. Craig Lowndes knows that Scotty McLaughlin is a fair racer and will give him racing room. And they're the little psychological tips that drivers need to take hold of to gain themselves track position because that is such an important aspect of what we do. Yeah, it's an important thing, absolutely, Larko. And it'll be very interesting to see what happens with the jump here because as the the tyre grip is low, the surface grip is low, it's more difficult to get the cars away sometimes. So let's have a look at this. This will be on. There's a total mark of 270 metres from the start line to get to turn one. Let's see what they can do. It sounds like a lot of, lot of time to sort yourself out. The reality is it's not. 42 laps ahead. Can Volvo break through in the championship? McLaughlin on pole again. Lowndes, the most winning man at Barbagallo. They'll go head to head. New generation versus old. Russell Ingalls ready to go as well. But the Volvo is slow. Oh. Ingle can't go anywhere. Lowndes to the lead. Coulthard will try to hang tough and go around the outside of turn one. Ingle got the best start of the lot then. He had nowhere to go. He was totally forced to jiggle between Coulthard and McLaughlin. This is very close with Fabian and Scott. They did a great job to get through there. There's not much room there, Murray. There is no room there. We know how the, the track snakes up the hill. McLaughlin and Coulthard still side by side. Engel's going to be the one that benefits from this because he's going to slide in behind the Volvo. Down into turn six. Coulthard's going to stay on the outside and try and get the drive. He's up the inside. Engel's got an overlap on McLaughlin. 
This would be good enough to get up the inside. He's up the inside. Oh, he's the breaking zone. And Great in the job. Holdsworth is making a move on Cool Tom. Lowndes is clearing away. Look at them. Side by side by side. Davison. He's down the inside of Mostert. Russell Engel. <laughs> Great stuff. That was a sensational move. And he planned it well. He knew that it's Scott not was over the edge, in. It's not, but Engel's move is, which is great. And that's a good move there by Holdsworth down the inside to get that job done on Fabian Coulthard. And Fabian can finally slot in. They can stop all firing up the outside. Outside. margin, 1.2 seconds, he's got like three free kicks in one lap. That had to be incredibly frustrating for Coulthard, he was second on the apex of turn one and now he's stripped at the end of turn of the, of the first lap, so a big loss there when it looked like he was going to get a very good game. And that was mostly caused by Scott McLaughlin hanging in and then Russell Engel applying the pressure at the right time to get this run. This is a great big roller coaster ride down to 255 kilometres an hour to finish the lap off. Good healthy battle there with Winterbottom and Mostert. Dale Wood's done a good job to get to ninth also. Remember the subplot too. We just rode on board with Mark Winterbottom. This is with James Courtney. He's 14th. He's right in the middle where you don't want to be. He's got cars in front, cars behind. Ingle, fastest lap that time around. Let's see what the repair management Australia Commodore has got for the Red Bull car. Remember, it's a triple eight Commodore with the same engine package. Let's see if he can take on the man who's led the championship in the early part of this season, early stages. Do you start to flick the brain already? Look after the rubber. You got it? Oh, absolutely. 100%. If you use them too hard at the start, that will hurt you later. So you've got to achieve the speed by getting to a number and driving it to a number early. And it's really, really difficult to tell your brain <laughs> to not get on the throttle that fraction bit earlier to try and get a run on someone. We can see McLaughlin's closed up that little bit of gap on Russell Engel. Lowndes, I think he's consolidating already. He's got that little bit of a lead. Wind cup down the inside of David Reynolds. The last turn, Bright is going to try and capitalise on this one. He's going to get an overlap into turn one. And for Wind cup, that's getting back to where he started. He lost a spot in that first lap. So he's P11 behind Tander. Bright and Reynolds side by side at one. Lowndes moving away that time around. 1.5 seconds with four laps in the books as we go through now. And every lap it gets harder and harder to stay on the outside of guys in some of these corners like turn one or down at turn six. You just have to give it up. You do not have the grip to hang on and try and stay uh, on the outside of those guys. Back with James Courtney, the Clipsal 500 champ, following his teammate Nick Perkett. Bright here trying to get a move done on Jamie Winkup. They're fighting on the fringe of the top ten. And listen to just how careful they are. This is on board with Reynolds in the bottle O Ford with the watching brief, the run over the hill down to turn seven, and it actually comes back uphill, which you don't get really for the external shot. This is the highest longitudinal brake force of the year. So when you can apply the brake in the dip, when the road comes back at you, you use that elevation to brake the car, but as I said, the hardest of any place we go to. And you never think it's going to stop, do Absolutely. you? Absolutely. Never think, I'm gone, as, I'm gone. As the tyre goes away, yeah. that right front starts to give up the ghost, and you've did the, the brake pedal feel changes completely. Robert Dahlgren there, oh. having a battle, a bit of an overlap there as well, but he backs out of it. Lucky he did back Lucky out of it. Lucky he backed out of it. Exactly. Replay of the start here, and you see that McLaughlin. Look at Ingle. Look at Left, Ingle. right, nowhere to go. Left, right, nowhere to go. Made a bolt to start, but couldn't do anything with it. Coulthard stayed on the outside for the rest of that lap. So there's nothing in it. You see, both those guys made duck starts. Fabian and Russell both made better starts. Look at the two of them coming forward. But the road's narrow. He can't get by. He tried everywhere. <laughs> so Russell couldn't get it done. And then, as Murph said, Fabian's out there in the Mulga. He's out there on the outside. He got away with being second, but this was really high quality driving because McLaughlin, and there's Fabian, just see the wing of the car there, they got through there together. It was very, very good driving, very fast, and gave each other healthy racing room. And this is the fight for second, Russell Ingle, Scott McLaughlin, Holdsworth has made a strong start, so Holden 1-2, Volvo 3, Mercedes-Benz in fourth, we're off and running in race 14 of the championship. And it's the chase for Craig Lowndes. He had a record-breaking win on the Saturday here last year. Can he grab another one? We'll continue on. It's lap six in Perth. Here is the fight. 
Lowndes leads, Ingle under fire, the Volvo is coming on down at turn seven, McLaughlin in the gap, Russell gives him some room because he knows that he'll have drive on the exit, and McLaughlin's pinched a little bit to the inside. Yeah, Russell's given him a lot of room there, and he's managed to stay there on the outside, he's now going to look out for Holdsworth, who's looming up the inside, but he slots in behind, sensible stuff there too, in Russell's behalf. We'll see how the Volvo, if he can pull away from Russell, if he's got better car speed or not. With them lined up, Holdsworth, Coulthard, Will Davison. Mostert still in front of Winterbottom. Remember the subplot there. If there's a safety car, what do Pepsi Max crew and FPR do? Winterbottom would be keen to get in front. That solves the issue. If you're in front of your teammate, you've got the call for when you need to make your stop, if indeed that becomes a factor during this race. On board with Will Davison in front of the car that he used to drive. Two years with FPR. This is Bright coming back at Wing Cup for 11th spot. So the reigning champ hasn't been able to move forward. Here's a chance for Craig Lowndes, the rest of the championship rivals, to steal some more points away from him. 75 to win this race. And another 75 a little later this afternoon. The only thing that can happen, Nunes, is that if there is a safety car, and of course Mostert being in front would normally have right of way, but it's still FPR's choice as to who they bring in first. So they can still make the call, no problem at all, for Winterbottom to come yep. in beforehand and park Mostert as the second stopper. So I'll send him away for another lap. Exactly. Even. Yeah. And, so and if you're stuck in the sand, normally it's out for three or four laps anyway. And this is something that they haven't had in the past. They've got a very clearly defined number two this year. In the past, they've had two drivers who've been competitive and at the front end, Will Davison and Mark Winterbottom. Most it very much is the number two at FPR. It's Supercar Saturday on Seven Sport and Craig Lowndes leads the way for Red Bull Racing Australia. Apart from that though, not too much is certain boys because <laughs> Scott McLaughlin is now second. The Volvo has moved through on Russell Ingle who last time we saw him challenge for a podium, it cost him money. Today he's looking a lot more solid even though he's lost this spot. Yeah, and look, he pretty much gave it away. He knew that he was holding Scott up a little bit and at the same time he's smart enough to know that this is a very, very long race and there's probably going to be pit stops. Our numbers already look like, in terms of tyre degradation, that it's worse than last year, to the point where even if there isn't a safety car, it is worth stopping and putting fresh tyres on. And we talk so much about the surface of this track. It was resurfaced 10 years ago, and every year we come back, worse. it gets slower and slower and slower, and the degradation gets higher and higher. Just in the Pepsi Max garage now with Tim Edwards, team boss. And Tim, you've, you've almost got a little dilemma on your hands at the moment. You've got the championship leader of Mark Winterbottom and your young gun of the team, Chaz Mostert, in front of him. When it's time to stop, how do you run that protocol? Well, if you come back in about, I don't know, maybe 10, 15 minutes, I'll give you the answer. Look, we've got different scenarios depending on what happens on any particular lap. So, you know, if they happen to stop for, on lap 12 for a safety car, there's a certain scenario, and if they stop... Lap 20, there might be a different scenario, or are they going to stop at all? Would you tend to favour the championship leader, do you think? Oh, look, that's an interesting discussion. I mean, what I can say is that we've got great harmony amongst all four drivers, and we're all working together as a team. And, um, you know, as you've seen, the way they've behaved with each other on track and even in the garage, it's, you know, we've got great harmony and, uh, and we're a team. We'll watch with great interest. Thanks, Tim. Uh, uh, Hey, Brett, I think Tim could be working at the UN based on those comments. <laughs> um, there's plenty, there's plenty of action going on here, but I reckon you're going to see a change of position between those two FBR Falcons as we look at Bright working over 10, a little bit of a touch there. David Reynolds looking for an opportunity and lingering just behind that is Jamie Winker, but I reckon those two FBR Falcons are going to change position before uh, pit stops come into play. Yeah, that's, that's one opportunity. The other thing is that you can, you can still even, whatever the circumstances whether it's a safety car or not you can still call the other guy in first so whatever happens they will not hurt frosty's championship now the, the other part that you just said there about bright coming forward his speed looks good greg yeah it does look good but you can see the attitude there's a little bit of a slide that those two cars had side by side him and gartanda out of turn six is just enough to hurt those tyres. It doesn't take much at all around this place to all of a sudden find that you've just lost that little bit of speed. Looking at the order here outside, uh, the tail towards the 20, and 
all I'm hearing on the radio is complaining race drivers. Ingle, though, has been bumped off the podium here. Holdsworth's in the gap, and Russell knows that there's another one coming. Cool out on the curb. Russell's trying to run it around the outside of the curb at seven, racing to one, and not have overlap for the move. And this won't be good when he goes to turn right down here because there's a Mercedes-Benz <laughs> parked also on the inside. Will Davison, good job to get there, but he's going to just give Russell a little bit of room to get himself back online. That was a good, sensible display of racecraft there by Will. And it doesn't look like Russell's him. car is quite what he would like to have. I mean, he's not going to want to be giving up this many places this early on in the piece. So uh, he's just trying to drive it as straight as he can. Keep out of the way of these guys, not lose much time as we look at down into six under brakes. He's oh. just run wide there because of that. He tried to give a little bit of room and it just pushed him offline slightly. And we'll see that Davison clearly has got the run up the inside. He's got two FPR Falcons in close proximity. And this is like the Fabian Coulthard dose. Stuck out wide, one wide and one back for a lap because now Mostert tries to get his nose into the gap. Winterbottom's lined up as well. Suddenly, Pompeo becomes seventh or eighth. And it looks like they've detuned that car too much. Russell actually had a big chunk of understeer in the middle of Cole, which is the corner over the back where Greg was explaining he ran wide. And when you've turned the car in there, you've got to be able to hold the apex. Good move. Good move, winner bottom. That was very, very good. And Russell doesn't want to give that one up as easy. Well, he's still got a bit of an overlap there, and he's given a bit of a push. <laughs> Look at that. The back of the number five Falcon. He's gone now. And it's going to lose another spot. Dale yep. Wood is going to take advantage of that little opportunity and get down the inside into that same spot. He lost that spot uh, uh, one lap ago. And that's Dale uh, Wood, the reigning Dunlop Series champ, who won a DVS race here, Murphy, remember, last year for Matthew White's team. Now Jason Bright lines up. So the Brad Jones racing cars starting to make their way forward. So what you've got to do is when you've qualified so well, you need to assert, and there's Lucas Dumbrell, the owner of the team, You've got to decide as to how you set the car up for the race. And when they're reasonably short races, you don't normally deviate too far from the qualifying setup. But because this place is so hard on tyres, they've probably chosen to detune it a bit and make it look after the rear tyre better. What it's done is it's made it too understeery, which means it pushes too far wide everywhere. He has too much turning to do, and then he has too much exit wheel spin. So his move, his change to the car, has not worked for him. We'll see how the rest of them run their course. Do they try to hang on and go the full race on this set of tyres, or do they go hell for leather and resign themselves to the fact that they'll have to come in and throw some more Dunlops out? At the moment, Craig Lowndes leads. 1.5 seconds is the margin. The Volvo is Scott McLaughlin's chasing lap 14 in Perth. We're going to drama with the left. Uh, just press on as best you can. Try coming two clicks on the front. Uh, two clicks up on the far. McLaughlin is just taking a tenth here and there away from the triple eight Commodore margin at the line 1.4 seconds with 14 down 28 left to go so one third race distance and Jamie Winkup his 13th degree has not made any ground in fact he slipped from where he started P11 and he's not looking like he's got much in the arsenal to do much about that we look at Lowndes's last lap time he's just over one second slower on the 14th lap than what, he, what his fastest lap was. So a 57.3, the last one was a 58.4. So we've seen a, a second drop off, and you can just listen as we talked about before. Look at those throttles being applied so gingerly. A short shift there between corners four and five, keeping the car as straight as they possibly can. And poor old Russell Ingalls losing another spot there. David Reynolds, who's got a little bit of pace on at the moment, takes that position away from him. And that's ninth for Bottom by four, Jason Bright off the road. Had been making ground, was in the 10. Started 13th for Team BRC, winner here in 2011. And he's been well off the road too. Yeah, he's gone right to the back of the pack. And now he's last because Jack Perkins was last runner in the Geldwin Ford. He's fighting with Robert Dahlgren and James Moffat. And James Moffat, 22nd. And been on the radio it says his car's terrible over through cold corner over the back at turn six which sets you up for your whole run down the hill to turn seven so that's a long chunk of lap to be struggling we always feel we need to tell someone when the cars are bad don't we not that they can do anything about it but we just want someone to know that you know we're not enjoying ourselves as much as we'd like <laughs> question is whether anyone talks back as well <laughs>
We've got it covered on the Mega Wall, Perth 400 with the V8 Supercars Championship. Craig Lowndes continues to lead, but Scott McLaughlin's flying. The Volvo is eating margin. Pit stop time. Pit lane has a car in it. Will Davison has just entered the lane in the number nine Erebus Mercedes-Benz. Tim Slade is in as well. It's starting to unfold. Yeah, the guys at Lucas Dumbrell Motorsport, they've got two hands on a tyre that is sitting in pit lane. That means he's either standing there just waiting for the call from the engineer. I've spoken to the engineer. They're not ready to give up too much information. Clearly, Russell is struggling. There is no issue in the car. It's purely a balance issue, as Scapey was saying. But at the moment, the two hands are still resting on that tyre, waiting to get out into pit lane. And on screen, our Castrol Edge kilometre count. We're at 38.7 kilometres of this 100k super sprint format weekend so tim slade's been in as well in the super cheap commodore he comes out just in front of this fight that i was mentioning mclaughlin is mowing down the commodore well he's right back as you can see he's taken massive speed and there's uh, i'm just frosty. checking whether that's frosty, yeah, frosty in so that's a great move except it's early that it might be early cool. exactly it's an early call <laughs> although it's this already Volvo. affected this guy so lounge has already been He's been mauled in the last three or four laps. That thing's got some speed. The Volvo is definitely looking after its tyres a little bit better at the moment. Again, another four tenths as Frosty pulls into the pit bay. So critical here to get this one right and get it done fast. Go, 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 go. I wonder whether Davison put four tyres on. It was a pretty quick stop. So we'll find that out for you. He might get down the inside oh, here with this run. This is on. McLaughlin's been ripping yeah, the or two. It's been big chunks every lap, and Lowndes won't fight him here. Well, no, no use. No, that it's is silly. strong. That car is incredibly strong still on this set of tyres to be able to drive underneath Craig Lowndes. Look at the numbers and make a move like that after this many laps. The Triple Eight car has still got a bit of a struggle on as far as tyre life is concerned. Holdsworth is still in the game. Kulta still in the game. We haven't even gone halfway through here into this 14th race of the championship. Ingles in this time around. Perkett's in and Rick Kelly as well. Now it's not just Greg Murphy was doing steering signs then in the commentary box because Ingle, uh, sorry, uh, Lowndes is running wide. We saw Ingle earlier run wide like that. And what actually happens is because it's so hard on tyres, it's not just the rear tyre, it's the front tyre also great. Absolutely, great. I mean, you're just waiting for the thing to turn and then you, you start to get a bit of turn, apply a little bit of throttle and the thing just switches into oversteer so quickly and then you've, you've damaged front and rear in that one small move as Russell Engel exits the pit lane. James Courtney fires into turn one. There's a bit of a gaggle behind Russell leaving. As Jason Bright, remember, he's been off the road, hence why he's further back. Onus is on the driver coming out of the lane to do it safely and not impede anybody else or make some contact. We've seen some dramas with that over the course of the last few years when this new pit lane facility was introduced to Barbagallo. Now Ingle's got, him, got to get himself up to speed, up to temperature and up to pressure as well. Scafi, uh, I'm up the other end of pit lane, but interesting, interesting remark about did he do two or four tyres. I guess it would be a big call to do two, wouldn't it? Because, you know, we're talking four to five seconds to put on four tyres, three to four seconds to put on two tyres. You probably wouldn't worry about losing that little bit of amount of time for the sake of putting on four tyres. Now, the other interesting thing here, two definite strategies. One, you've got to chase your mate, the guy you're racing with in the pit lane and put on fresh tyres at the same time so he doesn't under undercut you, get his green tyres and turn out some fast laps. Or the alternate that we're seeing happening out there, you stay out there now for quite a bit longer to have the real strong run home over those last five or six laps. Yeah, it's interesting strategy stuff, Larko, isn't it? It's amazing. And we're just doing the numbers here at the moment. McLaughlin's car is on track to be able to get through the race without actually doing a stop based on his degradation. He's 1.7 seconds faster now in front of Lowndes and has been massively faster than any other car in the last few laps. In fact, he's the only car still in the 58s, that has low 58s. Tires. Absolutely. And James Courtney has changed tyres. He's been through the pits at uh, 57.2. So that, that uh, eclipses the fastest lap time from the first part of the race that Craig Lowndes did. So he's done a 57 to at this stage, which is, you know, just over a second faster, I suppose, than uh, Scott McLaughlin. So that's not a huge differential at the moment, is it? The only thing that happens is, if, you, if you're so brave, you stay in the lead and you press on a complete green race, you're OK. Mm. If you get a safety car and whoever's then behind you on fresh tyres is going to gobble up and gone. And we've seen that before. Remember the Russell Ingle strategy at Winton. That was exactly. the case in point of how that unfolds. So really, they're treading water here. They're McLaughlin's just keeping an eye. Ah, now, Lowndes is in, McLaughlin's in, Holdsworth in as well. Yeah. 
this is and called risk management. Yeah. This is risk Cover management. Off. Exactly, because it's just no use. If the other front guys have done it, you've got to go with the guys you're racing. Yeah. Remember that Lowndes has a championship on the line. Coulthard's a title contender. Not a, not a good getaway. No, it wasn't. So I think he'll be okay. He had that little gap over Craig Lowndes as the Triple Eight team go to work. Ooh, he waited. Holdsworth gets out. There's Davison. Awesome. Yeah, so this There's is the undercut yep. that Will Davison's going to get them with. Yep. But remember, because he came in so early, yep. he will also have his tyres, in terms of life, hurt for longer. And also Mark Winterbottom. And remember that he's the guy, Will Davison, who proved the master here two years ago and pulled off a win that we he didn't did. think, and he probably didn't think he was going to be able to do in the Erebus Mercedes. Remember Holdsworth, he had a win at Winton, looked after the tyres there. Let's see how it unfolds. We're halfway through. We're going to get a really good, good, really good idea of how this unfolds. Well, this is patience too on Scott McLaughlin's part. He has to be as patient as he possibly can because he knows he's got, what was it, six or so laps on these guys on tyres. He's got the speed. That car's very, very pacey, albeit I think Mark Winterbottom's car's pretty good too. But he's going to have to be patient and wait and stalk these guys. There's still a long way to go. Richard Holway will guide him through that, Murphy. He'll be saying to him, just go easy at the start. Don't hurt them too much. This will be very important. That's Adam Gabore on the radio there to Chas Boston, who'll come out just behind Craig Lowndes. So his teammate has jumped him by stopping earlier, got the undercut. It's a few seconds ahead now from being behind before he stopped. And will he be able to run him down and what will happen if he does close the gap towards the end with those, uh, those two FPR cars? Uh, Fabian Coulthard now entering pit lane. Was leading the race in the Lockwood cars, never won or had a podium here. That's Chris Clark on the radio from Brad Jones Racing through the Techno Auto Sport pit on the way in. Reynolds in, Wood in, Wink up in as well. So Van Gisberg takes the lead. Oh, that's tight. That's a little bit of a delay for Fabs. Yeah, definitely a bit of a lay there. delay as Reynolds came in. Wink up. Yeah. So Lowndes has now set the fastest time of the race. The 57-1-2. So very good speed for Craig Lowndes. Remember, because he only did one lap in that qualifying session, he probably put fresh green tyres on to achieve that. Now it looks like Coulthard's probably left that a little bit long. He's had a, a, a bit of a loss overall there with behind both the FPR cars. Mostert's ahead of him, so maybe that strategy may be a couple of laps long and he won't probably get the gain being it was only a lap difference between him and Mostert stopping. McLaughlin moving with the Volvo. So the best car that's made a stop is Will Davison. Car yeah. 9, just at the bottom of screen there that's in front right. of these two. But this bloke's coming out of here. Yeah, look he at the speed. The look at the speed of that to, to, to move ahead of Winterbottom that quickly after mm. only, a, as we said, a five or six lap difference in the stop. To move ahead that fast and start trucking away after Will Davison, that's pretty impressive. Guys, Lowndes is going to be on a mission. He had a slow release as he was waiting in his bay to get going. Lee Holdsworth was actually out alongside him. And the team are just so cautious now. They didn't want to risk a penalty. So they just held Lowndes that split second to make it safe and clear. And as a result, he's been held up. Yeah, good point, Barretts. We were watching that and we, we were actually a little bit surprised that he was held. However, again, it's all about risk management. You've got to make sure you don't incur a penalty for something silly rather than a one or two tenths of a second penalty in pit lane. Here's the leader, Shane Van Gisbergen, and VIP Pet Foods Commodore qualified poorly in both sessions earlier today. He started 19th. At the moment, it looks like he's just going to keep going here and see how far he drifts back because well, he doesn't have fast car and he his history here is poor for where that, he is compared to other tracks. Either that or he's waiting for a safety car. Well, he might be waiting a little while because we don't have a very big tradition of lots of safety cars here. I think 34% over the last decade or so. So don't really get too many. And that's the margin that he's got in terms of what times he's doing versus Will Davison on the better rubber. This is Lowndes in. And he just missed the marks. This is OK. This part was all fine. To get away, he had to pull up. And there's so the he just had to pull back in behind there. But again, that Look was quite this. smart. And this now Scott is for it. the effective lead. So much more pace, Gaffey. 
good man. But confident that he can carry that through. Not just burning it up now. He's got 17 more laps. Look at all those Straight. rubber bits. The soft rubber peeling off on the run through six. I don't think he's burning it up. That no, thing, that no, thing is, is, is on rails. It's got no attitude going on. You look at the way the car is sitting on the road. The steering input is very smooth and very precise. And the numbers? I'd be changing my view of that right now. <laughs> <laughs> He's as cool as a cucumber, this kid. And watch the steering here. Watch the steering. Just how, how smooth that application. He's just edging that car. I'm going to stay on board for Scott McLaughlin for a lap at Barbagallo Raceway. Have a listen. The very talented young man in the S60 Volvo. Oh, I've got a bit of drama going here. We're just going to have to jump off Scotty's car because we've got a traffic jam at the Safeway car park. And it looks like Nick Perkins is the one that's going to end up uh, getting pushed into the trolleys. You, you call this. <laughs> I don't know if I want to. Stand back. Oh, teammates and teammates oh, everywhere. They're all bumping each other in a straight line. Dale would be very happy to be clear. And there's a couple of Nissans coming up behind as well. And Winkup's burying this. He's 19th. He's not a factor today at a track where traditionally He's belted everyone. He's been on 11 of the last 12 podiums here, and he's nowhere near the podium. This knock him down, drag him out fight is for 16th uh, <laughs> onwards. So they play for keeps, these boys down there. Oh, this is Caruso. Stim Slave is Caruso's diving oh. on the inside. I don't want to see what yeah. oh, I'm going I knew someone was going to emerge out there. I just wasn't sure who it was going to be. It is so, how frustrating is it? Yeah. Just cannot get back in line and watching cars go past. Poor old Timmy Slade. It's wild stuff. And that offline gets worse as the race goes on because that's where all the soft rubber discard goes and it's even tougher to hang there. Sometimes this is where the best race of the race actually is in this fight. Way back where. We are in the car that runs last in the race. Tim Slay, 25th. Shane Van Gisbergen's at the other end. He leads lap 29 at Barbagallo. Just goes to show how this championship keeps changing. Tim Slade qualified front row at Pukekohe in New Zealand in the super cheap auto Commodore from the Walkinshaw team. But in this one, at the next event, he's down the back of the pack. Here is the fight for fourth. Will Davison, Mark Winterbottom, former teammates. Mark Winterbottom with a few comments in the press in the last week or two, insinuating that things are a bit better now, that the team has changed a little in its driver lineup. Didn't name names, but didn't really have to. So. Plenty of rivalry here. Erebus and FPR together with their two cars on the road. Coulthard and Lowndes here side by side. Change of position. That's for eight. So the Kiwis through and Lowndes now trying to get back down the inside for one. Winterbottom will get it done here on Will Davison. And Lowndes will get it done. Oh, this is tight on Coulthard. And they're going to go side by side through the next couple of phases as well. Lowndes just pushes in behind. Thought the best, better part of Valor on that one, and he's—I think he's looking. He's, he's very aware of making sure he's not going to use up those tyres more than what he has to. Coulthard's got a bit of pace right now. Merck on Merck. Holdsworth takes the advantage over Davison, who stopped a fair bit earlier than him, and I think that's going to start playing to the hands of those guys who waited another four, five, six, seven laps. It's already taking effect. Van Gisbergen and Perkins. Van Gisbergen very wide under brakes into the last turn. Got a little bit of dirt. His pace has dropped into the minute. One minute that last lap for Shane Van Gisbergen. So that whole strategy of his does not seem to be working. It might just be a history-making day in the V8 Supercars Championship. This is Scott McLaughlin. The Volvo is a rocket ship today here in the West. He's going by Shane Van Gisbergen, who 
currently runs second in the race. He hasn't stopped for tyres. Jack Perkins leads. He hasn't stopped for tyres. They're two seconds a lap slower than this Volvo, which has made a stop for tyres and is charging on through. He's gone past Winterbottom. He's gone past Davison. He's in the lead. And it could be the first win for Volvo since 1986. It could be the day. I reckon that, uh, that Falcon's got some pace, though, guys. Yeah, it's not done. That gap, I don't think he's done here at all. I don't know if uh, Scotty's used up a little bit too much. Got held up on that last piece of action there between Perkins and Van Gisbergen, which is not helping as Perkins takes the line there in front of McLaughlin through one. This is costing him a lot of time. Look at the number five car. He is moving in very quickly. Yeah, he's definitely being held up pretty significantly there. And Van Gisbergen did it originally, and Jack now they have to just crisscross him here at the top of the hill. Sneak down the inside. He's done a nice job of that. If he just breaks sensibly down here, he'll be down the inside enough to command track position and take this off him. But as you said, Greg, that has helped Mark Winterbottom by a yeah, long way. These two way. are teammates here too. So Mark Winterbottom has had no loss whatsoever getting past the gel wind car. Whereas McLaughlin definitely lost a little bit of time. And that's Holdsworth behind him. The number four, Erebus Burke, remember, won a race at Winton. There's Coulthard. He's making great speed at the moment. This is really interesting. Lowndes is seventh. Winkup is 19. I know, but he's just struggling. Winkup's yeah. got no speed at all. But Richard Holway guided Scott McLaughlin through that very, very well. He knew he was being held up, but there's no use getting antsy about it. You can't pick it up and move it around. You've just got to make sure that you make the pass on whoever that is, which was Jack Perkins, and don't make a mistake to do so. So, although he's at the front now, he's actually moved away a little bit. He's almost a second clear of Winterbottom now and shows good pace. Mark, in part of that, you heard uh, Rich Holwell. I just heard him briefly say, eggshells, mate, eggshells, talking to Scotty McLaughlin. Yes. And driving the car here, you've got to drive it like on eggshells. You can't, and I think that's why Shane Van Gisbergen's maybe struggling here and in the past, is, you know, he muscles his car around. We've talked about his great car control. But here you need a lot more finesse, light fingers. You've got to feel the car. You've got to feel the throttle and apply a lot of discipline in putting that in place. I've got some graphs, actually, some data out of the cars here. I'll show you in between the two races exactly what we're talking about in that regard. Thanks, Larko. We also should have a look, get you to draw the surface profile of the road at some stage and put a tyre on it and try to explain for why the degradation is so high here because the grip level is massively low. It's a bit of a mystery for me where someone like Ben Gisberg and who goes well in the wet wouldn't go well at a track like this because you've got to drive the car like it's in the rain. I completely agree with you. It is a, it is a bit of a mystery why he is struggling with this so much. Because his car control, we talk about the eggshells, driving the eggshells, you know, very, very smoothly. He has absolutely beautiful ability to control those vehicles. And it doesn't really make a lot of sense, being there's no grip, that he's not able to do it here. Here's the other guy that's on the race winning scene. Coulthard has got a rocket. The Lockwood car has been making ground, and he's closed in now on Winterbottom for second. Holdsworth now has got to deal with Chaz Mostert behind. Look at Coulthard, that's the margin. He's oh. been ripping ground every lap for the last four, and now he's on Winterbottom. McLaughlin in front with eight to go. Yeah, and Holdsworth's just had to give away that spot to Mostert. The Falcon very, very smooth and fast here. Those Both of those cars showing great pace. And the good part for Scott McLaughlin with this is he'll be saying, go Fabian, go Fabian. Yeah. <laughs> because as much as... Fabian can pressurise Winterbottom. That will create drama for second and third. He will change his tune once he gets past, though. He'll oh, be well, back on Team Frosty, yeah, won't he? Yeah, Here we will go. Be, but it might be too late by then. This is the run to turn oh, six. The that thing's in the good game. move. Yeah, it's nice. good under brakes. Got it. Very nice move and very late. Ooh. Give him a little rub, a little push up the hill. That's all fine. That's absolutely no problem. All that stuff, sometimes we sanitise this game way too much. You should be able to bump and run and do all those things without unloading the guy. And that was just a little bit of gamesmanship. If you want to be a championship contender, as you guys well know, you need to step up on the tracks where historically you haven't been strong. Brad Jones Racing have always been pretty good at Barbagallo, but it was Jason Bright getting the results. Fabian Coulthard has never finished on the podium here or won a race. On days like today, this makes me see he's more of a championship contender than we've thought him to be before. Reynolds! Oh, well, rear's locked. That's his old boss, too. Wheels were locked, and bang, into the back of Todd Kelly. That was a wild moment. Todd Kelly's done a great job in this race yeah. to get to 10th. From 18th on the grid. Absolutely. With the Nissan's not going terribly well on the whole, he is the best of them, and 
by a long way, the rest are 20th, 21st and 22nd. This could be interesting, boys. We've got the two FPR cars battling very close, nose to tail. That monster car stopped a little bit later than his teammate. And now the pressure's on. What do we think is going to happen? Uh, Gary Rogers, just diving into the cream cakes there. Is that yeah, an early mate. celebration? Or... Oh, well, got a little while to go, but we're going OK, Mark. You know what this is like. It ain't over, it's over. Hey, going very well. Uh, Scotty McLaughlin, I mean, we forget he's 20 years of age. His performance, he must make you a very happy race team boss. Oh, it does. Look, he's a terrific young bloke to work with. He's a little kid. He loves playing games and fiddling around, but he gets in that car, it is all business. He just drives it, gives it everything, is not intimidated by the... You know, the more older experienced guys, because he knows he's bloody good. Yeah, you, mate, you must be so impressed with him. Oh, it's great. I mean, hey, these are the blokes here that are responsible for it. They've worked hard, and it's just great to see the team get the result. Good on you, Gary. Good on you, mate. Well done, Gary. That's, uh, it's been an unbelievable record of bringing young people into this sport. And this is another one that he's been able to boast with young Scott McLaughlin. Now, this is the past. Just a second ago, while we were talking to Gary, down the inside goes Mostert on Winterbottom. Now, this is the championship leader. Remember that he came in five laps before Mostert. So, so we called, but we thought that might have been a bit early. It's definitely too early based on that performance. I mean, I'm, I'm impressed that they've let that happen and they've uh, let these guys go at it and uh, give uh, Chaz the opportunity to do his thing. So they'll obviously not want their championship leader to lose too many more spots, lose too many more points, but at the moment, they run third and fourth. Rihanna. I just want to highlight that Todd Kelly, you were just talking about him before. He started this race from 18th position. Very, very disappointed after qualifying. He came in for his pit stop. Two green tyres on the left side of his car, two used tyres on the right side of his car. He is now in 10th position. Who knows what we're going to see at the second part, the second race this afternoon. Yeah, I agree, Rihanna. That's a really good performance. And he, he would have done that to conserve another two greens for the next race. So those tyres have been used differently than everybody else. Now Jack Perkins is just up in front of them, so I would expect Jack to fall back behind Todd Kelly. So if Todd gets up to ninth from 18th, that's a great run. Yeah, but I mean, you remember where Jack started. So he started last, he hasn't had a pit stop. He is the first of the guys that hasn't stopped, and he's still running eighth, and his pace isn't as bad as what I thought it would be. So he's managed to hold on to those tyres. We've only got uh, five, four laps to go. That's a pretty good effort. And the other guy that hasn't stopped being Gisberg, and he's now favoured. He's 10 seconds behind Jack. So this is actually all right for the yeah. Jaguar Ford. He's eighth at the moment. They're not swarming him. They don't look like they're just going to eat him alive. But if, but if he drops only another three or four spots, that's a massive that's still, game. Still a net game when you start from 25th, last on the group. This has been a nice run from the son of the Hall of Famer, the six-time Bathurst champ. But now he's under fire from... James Courtney with Todd Kelly and David Reynolds lined up. Ingle is 12th, guys. We should update on Russell, who started from third and was strong early. Courtney now down the inside. And this is hard for Jack because he's one out and one wide now. Do you know our friend Neil Crompton, Marcel Marceau? He <laughs> yes. just said that with Jack's hands, Jack's, yeah, with his hands, with, in sign language, that uh, Jack's best performance this year was eighth. Oh, so this is right on for oh, It's going to be all of them gone. David was... Reynolds on his old boss again. I thought it was going to be three wide into the last turn. We got away with it. Yeah. And that's so cool. Jack's gone to tenth now. That yeah. was going to be his equal best. With only three laps left to run, McLaughlin leads by 1.2 seconds to Coulthard. Mostert's on the podium. He's third. Winnerbottom. Hold to it. Lowndes is sixth. Then Will Davis. Look at Jack. He's just hanging on for the next three laps here. It's a hard one. It's really, really difficult. You just want this race to end now. His teammate, David Reynolds, right behind. But look at the attitude of the Gelbin Falcon. He's going to have to give this one away. There's absolutely no option. Those Dunlops are screaming. So for Craig Lowndes fans, he's currently in sixth. So just outside the top five. Started from the front row of the grid with Scott McLaughlin and has not had the tyre consistency today to be able to battle for another win here. He's had 14 wins at this place. He's had a, an unbelievable record at Barbagallo Raceway, and Holdsworth has gone by, as you can see there, with those lap times. And Winterbottom is on target in fourth to just edge another couple of points in this 
championship fight from Craig Lowndes, but Coulthard is second. He'll get a couple back on Winterbottom. So it's still really early stages in terms of the championship, but it's one of those cases that every point really does count. And the pace for the front two or three is within a tenth now. It's flattened out. Everyone's pretty much at the same level for this run to the line. But Lowndes still looks like he's got something left here for Holdsworth in the fight for fifth place. But this is back to the front. One to go across the line this time. 2.4 kilometres between Volvo and its first victory in the championship in just a lazy 28 years. That's fantastic, isn't it? It's an amazing turnaround too. I mean, they struggled a little bit at Pukekohe with a bit of tyre dig. The car didn't have the speed over the distance. And we come here to a circuit that has worse grip than just about anywhere else. And they've made a game. They've made that car the best out there on the track on a low grip surface. That's a huge improvement and a massive game by these guys. And uh, you know, only half a lap to go, as you said, to to get this win. Coulthard still pushing hard. The gap is one second. I tell you what is a bit monotonous now, Nunes. Yeah. Is this New Zealand gig? Uh, huh? Yeah. 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 They're How's everywhere. How's this McLaughlin Coulthard gig going at the moment? Chas Mostert is best of class. Lunatic alongside us. I haven't time. said anything. I've said nothing. <laughs> you know, I'm going to in a minute, but I haven't said anything yet. Well, final turn is coming up. The breakthrough we've been looking for. Volvo, it will be their day in the V8 Supercars Championship. You've got to go back to 1986 when they last won in the championship. It's V for yes. Volvo and it's V for victory. Scott McLaughlin breaks through for the S60 in the V8 Supercars Championship. It's Kiwis 1-2 and the Swedes are on top. And congratulations to everybody involved in this project, from Gary Rogers Motorsport and from Volvo, to Matt Braid, Oliver Pegum, all the people that have been so integral to getting Volvo back on track in this country and to win their first race in that time frame. It is just extraordinary the level of performance in such a short period of time with the S60. Great job by all at Polestar 2 in Sweden and Christian Dahl and the whole team to bring this together and to win five months into the calendar year. Bit of Kiwi speak there, bit of... Uh, bit of bro. Yeah, bit of bro stuff going <laughs> on. The boys, very happy. What a great drive by the young, young Kiwi. Absolutely superb. Turns 21 very soon. And, and you forget he's that driving, too. He's driving like a guy yeah. that's been doing this for a lot, lot longer. Gary Rogers, team boss, former driver. He's brought up so many young guys through this team. Some of them haven't worked out. This guy's working out. He's definitely, you know, people are comparing him to Craig Lowndes, but it's not just one of those flash in the pan type headline grabbing words. It is very much the real deal. Scott McLaughlin is the real deal, and Volvo have won 14 races into their return in the championship. It's fantastic stuff. This young man drives well enough, Nunes, to be at the pointy end of this field for a long, long time to come. Well, there's no question about that. You know, his. His ability to stay so calm under pressure is is something like, I think, uh, we haven't seen in a very long time, probably a Craig Land style uh, right from the beginning of his career. So just a phenomenal road that these guys have taken. And this will be a, an incredibly emotional moment coming up here very soon. And congratulations to Gary Rogers and that team. Third race win for Scott McLaughlin. Remember, two wins last year with the Fujitsu Commodores from GRM. But this one will just mean something a little different. The first time for Volvo and to do it at a place where it's been dominated by Triple Eight and FPR for the last five or six years. They've broken that stranglehold and like pole positions, once he's broken through, the floodgates open. Absolutely. There's so many people from Volvo here today. In fact, Managing Director for Australia, Matt Braid, is here with his contingent. A little bit of bro love there. Murph, you'd be happy with that? He can translate for us. Yeah, what, what did they speak? Is that... Some weird code or dialect? We, we, or? Keep it, we keep it to ourselves. Oh, okay. We're very <laughs> modest. Anyway, great job. Scott McLaughlin and everybody involved in this project, from Gary Rogers and the team from Volvo. Extraordinary run. It was coming. It was coming. Yeah, it certainly was. And they've shown form, but that's a very emphatic victory today. And four different manufacturers in the top five. Three different manufacturers on the podium with Volvo, the Commodore VF, and the Ford Falcon FG. It's great stuff, but right now, it's all about Scott McLaughlin. Barrett's here with him. Oh, you bet it is, Scott. Congratulations. You said you wanted to get that victory for Volvo. It's been coming. You've been edging away. You've got there. Well done. Yeah. Um, old mate upstairs wasn't helping me. It, it, something went wrong with the exhaust, and uh, I thought it dropped on seven cylinders there for a bit, so it put me off. But uh, boys gave me a great car, and hopefully we can back, uh, bounce back and win the next one as well. Your focus when you get in the car has, has been just incredible this year, mate. What do you put it down to? How, how do you maintain that? I mean, it's been a rapid climb to the top. Yeah, I don't know. Um, Mum and Dad have been massive supporters of my career and my sister as well. And 
they've kept me on my, my, my on my feet on the ground and uh, and I'll, 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 I'll cop a little slap if I didn't. <laughs> no, but um, awesome, and I've got an awesome family, awesome team behind me, and um, Gary Rogers, my boss, and can't thank everyone enough. This is awesome. Volvo Pulsar, Valvoline's first race win is fantastic, and I'm not going to swear on TV again. <laughs> Good man. And it might be time to ask Gary Rogers for a pay rise too. <laughs> yeah, I'm an apprentice, so I've got a couple of ways yet. <laughs> no. Hey, we've got some silverware for you too. Uh, please accept this as the winner of race 14 of the year, Scotty. Congratulations and well done. A great result for Volvo. Good stuff. Fabian Coulthard as well. Fabian, well done. Uh, that is an important uh, second place for you because it lifts you up now to second in the championship. Yeah, it was good. You know, I had to work for it. Um, you know, we pitted probably a little bit later than everybody else. But, you know, good good job to my Kiwi bro, Scotty. You know, we had a good side-by-side -side battle for the first few laps and you know, it was uh, a bit of fun. So, you know, credit to my guys, you know, not only the guys here, but the guys back at work. You know, Lockwood Racing do a fantastic job and pretty good strategy, so it's been not a bad day. Well done, Fabian. For you too, the silverware, uh, which you take and enjoy with the team. Congratulations, second spot. And to Chaz Mostert as well. Chaz, this is shaping up as a pretty super year. We're talking about Scotty's great year, but for you as well, uh, it's just been superb. Well done. Yeah, it's fantastic. Uh, something with me and threes, I don't know what goes on there, but uh, yeah, coming off Pookie and coming here and getting another podium, it's awesome. Uh, our car was probably the quickest on track, so it's a bit disappointing not to get the win, but um, yeah, ecstatic with third on the podium, and uh, unfortunately, we don't get champagne, so a little bit disappointed there too. Well, you just got to get on the podium later this afternoon. We do have the silverware for you though, mate. Enjoy that with the team and congratulations once again, awesome. Chaz. Well done. Thank you very much. Mark, we're in fourth position. Good job, mate. A lot of our chat though today has been about the, the issue with Mostert and yourself. You know, you're after a championship. He's doing well. Passing manoeuvre there. He got by. We're a little bit surprised to see that. Yeah. Um, oh, he's trying to win the race. So uh, he was clearly quick, quicker. He come in a bit later. Um, had fresher tyres, so I just pulled over and let him go through. So, um, you know, there's no use trying to battle him. I want to see him get up the front and put pressure on the other blokes. And, uh, yeah, it's not my team. Everyone's trying to win, so um, I gave him the best opportunity then. Didn't want to hold him up, and uh, he got third, so it was good to see. Yeah, so it's pleasing from us sitting watching the telecast. It's actually not as structured as sometimes we might otherwise appear. Yeah, some other drivers may think it's that way, but... Uh, uh, we don't. It's um, every man for himself. We get equal equipment. Um, you know, I'll have my day, he'll have his day. But uh, it's good to see him on the podium. He's, he's a ripper young guy and he's, he's a champion. So um, he was quicker then. Why battle him? There's no ego. We'll uh, get third and fourth. It's a good day. Good on you, mate. Very well said. Thanks, buddy. Ta. <laughs> and championship leader Mark Winterbottom, 108 points. To recap the results, Volvo, Holden, Ford, and what Chaz Mostert said, that's his third, third place in the last four races. That's what he's talking about with all those threes. Both Erebus cars in the top seven. Betty Clemenko's not here this weekend, but you'll be stoked to see that. Jack Perkins, it paid off. He got through from 25th to 12th. Russell Lingle back in 11th. Jamie Winkup, whoa, way back in 17th. And Shane Van Gisbergen, the gamble didn't work. He finished last in 25th.